Good afternoon, dear church family. Um, it's been lovely weather, hasn't it, over this Easter period? Uh, and I trust you're in good health. Um, I'm just going to uh, try and encourage us again uh, by looking at a passage in Scripture. I'm going to look again at a psalm that I've referenced in previous talks, Psalm 23, uh, which is, of course, a major source of encouragement for us as we endure this pandemic. And it's been referenced by numerous people that I have heard uh, trying to uh, give encouragement. One verse that springs to mind, I think, when we think of Psalm 23 is verse 4. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. And we rightly take great comfort from the fact that God, who is our shepherd, is with us every step of the way through these dark times, that he protects us and comforts us. Most of us will know that the protection we receive isn't so much against the horrors of this fallen world like the current pandemic, COVID-19, as against falling away from faith and thus from the salvation that is ours in Christ. Nevertheless, if we do have to face the grim realities of this fallen world uh, in terms of the horrible things that it brings our way, God is there with us as we do so. And he keeps us for eternity. He doesn't let us go, as is evidenced by verse 6 of the psalm. So in spite of having to face and deal with much of the brokenness of the fallen world, surely goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. These are comforting and solid truths taught to us by David in this famous psalm. And there's huge solace to be found in them at a time like this. But let's learn another, perhaps not quite so obvious lesson from the way that David structures this psalm. If you look at the first three verses, he says things like, The Lord is my shepherd. He makes me lie down. He leads me. He restores my soul. He guides me for his name's sake. So here is a description of who our loving God is and what he does for us, things David notes. But then there's a change in verses 4 and 5. Here David refers to God no longer as he, but as you. I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me. You anoint my head with oil. And then in verse 6, he switches back. I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Of course, we should ponder who God is and what he has done for us, just as David does in the beginning of the psalm. We should always be trying to understand God's character and his ways. And as we do so, we should then turn what we learn about God into prayer with God. So when I state that God is my shepherd and that he guides me in paths of righteousness, not far behind should be the prayer, Thank you, God, for caring for me, for protecting me and ensuring I grow in godliness as your child. Or as David does, he prays it like this, knowing your comforting and protecting arm around me even in these dark days. Lord, I lean on you and I will not fear what might lie ahead because I know you'll never let me go, that you will bring me in the end to your glorious kingdom where I and all believers will live with you in your presence forever. That's a praise of what he actually says in those last three verses. You see, if our faith means anything, their knowledge of God in our heads must become reality in our hearts and be expressed verbally to him. What we learn from this is that it's good not to talk very long about God without talking to God. And of course, 
we do that in prayer. So let's spend some time praying now. And um, I'm going to spend the majority of this time focusing on people who are working on the front line. So let us pray. And uh, Father, we bring to mind all those who are working in the health and social care sector. We pray for all the staff of hospitals uh, and social care services, including specialist staff. Lord, the doctors, the nurses, the um, um, people who clean, the caretakers, all those working in supply chains, including uh, producers and distributors of medicines and personal protective equipment, which is so badly needed. Lord, we pray for them. We pray your protection over these people. Thank you. Thank you so much for their willingness to work in what proved to be sometimes very dangerous conditions. And so we do particularly pray for people known to us at this time. And Father, I lift you, Nada. Pray your hand of protection on her. Pray that she would recover from the illness that she has at the moment. And we pray for others that we know personally who are involved as doctors or nurses or cleaners or um, suppliers who are going into hospitals or into care homes and so on. And then, Father, we also want to bring to you uh, those still working in education and child care, um, teaching staff, social workers, uh, people working in nurseries who are caring for the children of key workers and children from vulnerable situations. Lord, have your hand of blessing and protection on these people too. Thank you again for them and their willingness to, to work uh, in, in ways perhaps which they had never envisaged. Pray that the children would benefit from their time in the schools as they're cared for. Pray that there would be opportunity for Christian teachers to share something of their faith and of the hope that they have with the children and others around them. And then, Lord, we, we look uh, uh, to pray for part of our public service, uh, for those who, who are required to keep the justice system running, uh, for, for magistrates and judges and uh, bailiffs and, and all the, the people who work in courts where it's necessary for those courts to still be working. We, we pray for all the clergy and all the churches throughout the country and for church workers, people who are uh, putting in a huge effort to get the gospel out. Uh, thank you so much for the energy that was put in by so many churches to get the gospel out this last Easter weekend. And Father, we do pray that uh, your word would take root in the hearts of many who heard that message, who don't yet know you, and that you would be drawing them into your kingdom. We know, Lord, that your word does not return to you empty. And Father, this is also an incredibly difficult time for funeral directors. Uh, we pray your hand a blessing on them for sensitivity, uh, for faith, that they would turn to you and it's also a very tough time for journalists and those in, in broadcasting. Lord, uh, help them to be honest. Help them to report the truth. And I pray that you'd bring many of them to faith and that they, through what they write and through what they say, would point others to the hope that is to be found in Christ alone. We lift you uh, local and national government. Father, we thank you that Boris Johnson seems to be out of danger. Now we pray for his complete recovery. Uh, we pray for others in government who are ill at the moment. Uh, pray for them to recover as well. And we pray for those uh, who fill administrative occupations that are essential um, for an effective response to COVID-19. There, there is always office work to be done. 
behind the scenes work to be carried out. And we pray for those sorts of people. We pray for those working in benefits offices, um, having to deal with hundreds of thousands of new claimants. Um, and we pray for those needing uh, help, those struggling financially because of the situation, Lord. Again, I pray that they wouldn't despair. I do pray that there would be financial help for them and that, that it would be quickly forthcoming. But again, I pray, Lord, bring Christians their way so that they can turn not just to material help, but to you who will give them the ultimate help that they need. And we pray for those who, who though furloughed at the moment, may be feeling that they are likely to lose their jobs. Uh, pray for them to know your presence. And Lord, it, it doesn't look good in terms of the immediate short-term future, but I pray that there would be enough to go around so that people can survive without falling into despair. And I pray this would be a time of revival, of people turning back to you. And as we think of material needs, Father, we think of the very basic need for food and other necessary goods. We thank you so much for the shops that remain open, uh, for those manning tills uh, in, in, in the front line, as it were, there, uh, those helping customers, uh, packing shelves, um, those growing the food, the farmers, those working and processing it in factories to make the food, those delivering it to distribute it and, and, and so on. Uh, we also thank and praise you for banks that are still open and operating, albeit uh, with shortened hours. Pray for your protection on all these people, Lord. And I, I pray, Father, that um, again, you would use Christians to just talk to people as they have opportunity to share faith with them, to point them to the hope that we have in you. We also want to pray for public safety and national security at this time, Lord. Thank you that um, there's been such a good response throughout the British public by and large. We do pray for police pray for them in their jobs, pray for, again, sensitivity and an ability to read a situation and know wisely what to say and when to say it. We pray for support staff of the police and we pray for the armed forces personnel who, who may uh, be involved in one way or another um, in helping maintain calm and order. We pray for fire and rescue staff um, because they'll be working in conditions that just take them into to danger anyway. But there's the added danger of not kn knowing whether they're going where the virus is. We pray for those uh, responsible for border security. And we pray for our prisons and probation officers. Lord, there's so many people involved in, in public safety and national security. And we pray that you have your hand of blessing on, on all. Keep them safe. Give them sensitivity. And again, I pray that the gospel would go out to those who don't know you. We pray especially for the Chester Diocese chaplaincy teams at Thorn Cross and Style Prisons. We pray for the governors there, the staff, the chaplaincy volunteers and the residents. Father, use them, I pray. Use those chaplaincy teams to bring the good news of Jesus into those prisons. And then there are those who work in transport, who are keeping um, our air, water, road and rail uh, transport services running, um, all which are needed at this time. There is upkeep and maintenance that is absolutely essential. Um, and, and Father, we thank you again for these people who are working in strange conditions. And we continue to lift them all to you all these people for your blessing. There are others, those who work in utilities, communication and financial services. Um, 
Uh, we pray for all the staff who are required to keep oil, gas, electricity, water and sewage operations running. For those who, who um, collect our bins, uh, for, for those who work, work in the municipal services, uh, for staff in the civil, nuclear, chemical and telecommunication sectors. We pray for our, our local postmen and women and all those working in the postal services, making sure that all of these essential services uh, continue to be provided. We thank you for those working also in the financial services. If, if you know of any person who's working on the front line um, in any of the, the areas that I've already mentioned, I'm going to just be quiet for a moment to give you time to pray for them. And Father, we turn our focus more onto the church now. We do thank you that uh, the committee who were to interview people for the next Bishop of Chester were able to do so, able to meet. And we do uh, pray for the next Bishop of Chester at this time of waiting, that you, Lord, would prepare their heart and bless them and keep them um, at this time so that uh, at the right time the announcement can be made as to who is the Bishop of Chester and I pray Lord that um, the person would be the person of your choosing that they would be godly and that they would um, uphold the gospel both through deed and word in every aspect of their life we pray for our churches throughout the diocese and especially we pray for our church here at Holy Trinity. Won't you keep us faithful to you, faithful as a church family. Thank you so much for um, every member of our church family. Father, I pray that we would be praying for each other. Help us to use the prayer diary daily to look through it and pray for those who appear on each page for each day, lifting them to you, asking your hand of blessing and protection on each, just committing one another into your hands. There might be something specific or a specific person that you'd like to pray for at this time. Again, um, I'm going to keep a moment of quiet so you, you can pray for that situation or person, and then I will continue. Lord, I particularly want to continue to pray for Barry and Paula. Lord, please keep them in the palm of your hand. We know they're in the palm of your hand, but let them know that. Help the doctors to properly diagnose and treat whatever it is that's affecting Barry. Uh, he's been through so much. Please relieve him of his pain and give them both a real sense of your love and your presence with them. Help them to lean on you. And we remember Graham and Julie before you as well, Lord. Keep your hand of protection over both of them and especially over Graham as he continues his radiotherapy. Father, we pray for a miracle there, if it's your will at all. But above all, let them know your loving arms are around them, that you will never let them go. We pray for others in our church family, Lord, who are lonely who are ill, who uh, might be struggling in some other way. You know their need, even before we ask, and we just lift each one to you, asking that you would meet them at the point of their need. And above all, 
fill them with a sense of that certain hope that we have in Christ. Let them know the forgiveness of sins and the hope of heaven and eternal life, that they are your children and heirs of all things in this universe along with Christ. And so we pray, Father, that Christ would be glorified and recognized by all within this crisis. We pray particularly for ourselves that we would more clearly see ourselves as you see us, both in our sinfulness as well as in our godliness, and that we would remember that you see Christ when you look at us having forgiven our sins and I pray that we would remember that we are to be Christ to those around us and right as we end prayer together let's pray for Bishop Keith father we want to thank you for him at this time of incredible stress when he's had to take over leadership of the diocese uh, in in a a time period that no one could have foreseen. We thank you for his steady hand, for his great faith, for his inspiration, and for the way you have used him to bless so many within our diocese. And we pray, Lord, that you would continue to be a blessing to him, be his strength and be his um, comfort at this time. And we pray for Rosie and the rest of their family as well. Protect them all from getting ill and help them not only to be blessed, but to be a blessing everywhere that they find themselves. So we lift our prayers to you in the name of Jesus, knowing, Lord, that you have heard them. Those that I've said out loud and those that the rest of us have said as well whether they've remained quietly in our hearts and minds or whether they've been spoken out loud and we pray only father that you would answer our prayers in ways which bring glory and honor to the name of jesus because we pray in his name amen well thank you all for spending this time with me and i do pray that you feel at least a little encouraged now. God bless you and see you sometime later in the week. Bye.